Hello, I am going to make a presentation on safety instrumented system application program basics. The video is being taken on behalf of instrumentationtools.com and automationcommunity.com. Kindly watch and subscribe. Sys application program is vital for Sys logic solvers. Users has to follow a uniform approach based on the conditions set by international safety approval agencies for successful safety instrumented system of implementation, SIS implementation. As per IEC 61511 standards, the application program of the SIS shall be in accordance with the application program safety requirements and all the requirements for all SIL up to and including SIL level 3. Meaning, the program by different manufacturers on a different application should follow an uniform standard otherwise uh, it may be confusing and uh, the real safety point of view the required safety may not be able to be achieved that's why international agencies are there to govern and set the model accordingly all the individual manufacturers has to develop the strategies similarly the engineering and design companies the manufacturing plants they need to form follow an uniform approach to implement the safety instrumented functions even if there are multiple vendors supplied the safety instrumented system across the plant the you know, type of blocks type of programming structure has to be uh, consistent across many plants sys application program as defined in ansi and isa 84 these are the two international standards the user shall ensure the application logic is documented in a clear, precise and complete way. Only application logic under the control of a formal revision and release control program shall be provided and considered for use on a safety instrumented system. The application logic formal revision and release control program shall be provided and maintained by the user. There could be a requirement in the applications in the process for any small changes or it could be a sometimes it could be major change due to a project's implementation so there may be multiple revisions coming on the programs every time whenever there is a revision that has to be properly maintained and updated there could be some small changes there could be some major changes which has to be recorded and updated and the earlier version of the program before any change has to be saved in a separate portable media or something so that there is any chance of program getting corrupted or any error occurred during the downloading of the program it will be useful for the user to recover from the old program available in his hand so that's why the revision has to be maintained strictly and the procedures has to be followed. Only software under the control of a formal revision and release control program shall be provided and considered for use on a SIS. The embedded software and utility software, formal revision and release control programs shall be provided and maintained by the SIS manufacturers. The manufacturers shall also provide and maintain a bug list and advise customers of any software faults which may lead to a failure to function on demand. The manufacturers always develop the program and test it in their bench. So, even after testing, there could be a possibility for a bug in a program when it, the application is uh, running on the processor. There could be an error which may lead to the particular part of the plant or equipment getting going for a shutdown. So, if there are any program bugs is found by the manufacturers that has to be notified to the all respective customers who are using their products. This is something like a Microsoft uh, for the operating systems goes for multiple revisions and changes due to any enhancements. The user shall not modify the sys embedded or utility software because they are pre-configured so the user uh, should not play on it and then do any modifications on the embedded software. The user shall ensure the application software is documented in a clear, precise and complete way. The application software formulations and list programs shall be maintained by the user. 
these are all the different conditions set by the ANSI ISA 84. This is a sample program. The parameter assignments and other good parameters will be available. So, the user or engineering person involved in the plant maintenance, they will pull the element blocks and then add it to it to build the required logics. So, the logic we basically built by the engineering procurement and construction after the engineering procurement and during the construction and it will be vetted by many people who are all having the control system as well as the process knowledge and it will be implemented and rolled out for the plant operations. Whenever any changes is required to be implemented due to the process needs or the project implemented in the particular area, that portion of the logic has to be updated according to the site requirement and that has to be uploaded to the respective programming processor CPU of the safety instrument system and that can be monitored by an engineering session which could be located in a remote area. So, this is a frequent activity during the operation of a plant. So, similarly, for the application software and embedded software, there could be diagnosis available. Each manufacturer will have their own uh, independent diagnostic facility and uh, the program could be in a different manner for the diagnosis. So, if there are any requirements for any error happening, so the diagnosis uh, software will help to troubleshoot and find the fault where it is happening. Application program configuration requirements. The programming application code is to be taken up subsequent to logic solver selection to execute the safety instrumented functions. The application program must follow manufacturer's specifications described in the safety manual to ensure safety and reliability. So, the ultimate aim for each plant owner is to run the plant safely without any hazard or even if there is a hazard happening in the plant that has to be contained without going for a major disaster. It could be the human being getting injured or getting life threat or the dam equipment getting damaged due to the safety hazard or the hazard can be contained due to some reasons keeps on spreading, it may be spoiling the community surrounding the plant area. So, all these things has to be avoided and controlled as minimum as possible by the respective plant managers. Supporting documentation such as programming criteria, safety manual and a specific platforms design specification is required for application program development. Each manufacturer has to prepare a safety manual to do any diagnosis and troubleshooting on their CPU and processors and other input output models, communication models, etc. So, in that they need to provide the different failure rate because all the manufacturers need to undergo the testing as per the requirements set by the international agencies like IEC, ANSI, ISC and all and they have to bring out the results which will be again verified and approved by the respective agencies. SIFs implemented on a certified logic solver must follow the safety manual for that logic solver which are subjected to international safety certification agencies is what I explained earlier. Written security procedures shall exist to prevent unauthorized or inadvertent, inadvertent changes in the software program. Only experienced guys who are all having familiar and on experience on the safety instrumented system to work with the logic solver and who are all certified to work on the particular area can only do the modifications. Not the persons who belongs to different plant area. Even though he is knowledgeable, he may not be having a certification to work on a different plant. Like for example, from plant A, the engineer cannot come and directly work in plant B. So, in, in case of any requirement, the plant B engineer is not available, he is sick, he is not reporting to duty, 
in such cases based on their manager's approval, plant manager's approval, the person from plant A to can come and work in the plant B. Because plant uh, process could be different from each plant. So, the persons who are all working in the respective plant will undergo the certification requirement and it has to be reviewed and revalidated from time to time, maybe three years or five years based on the requirement. Plant production in charge shall designate those persons allowed to make changes to the code and those that are allowed to perform the program loads. Who, wherever SIF and BPCS application programs are implemented on a single certified logic solver, the SIF code must either be separated from BPCS code, like separate partitions, or be clearly identified in the program so that it can be distinguished from other program. Whenever any particular logic is being utilized for the safety applications, that has to be highlighted and it should not uh, be a part of the uh, normal basic process control system loop. All safety instrumented systems and approved critical instrumented systems shall have safety trip set points protected from unauthorized changes, for example, unchangeable constants. Like the, there could be a number of timers, constants used in the programming. Those can be modified only by the competent personnel. Not everyone should be able to do the changes. Different level of authorization for technician, supervisor and plant control engineers shall be configured. If designs employing single component, that is one out of one configurations with the diagnosis, the automatic testing must have an alarm on detected failure. The SIF final element must either go immediately to the safe state or a risk mitigation hazard assessment and alternate management to be developed by operation personnel and plant operators need to be trained in this response to sustain the plant operations when CIS instruments goes out of service. The CIS instruments has to work in case of any critical hazard and any demand arising. But should there be any failure of such instrument, then the operation personnel need to take over and they need to do some manual operations to protect their plant and equipment. That's why it is very essential for the operation personnel to have, a, to have an adequate knowledge on the safety instrumented system instrumentation part, basic requirements, so that in case those instruments did not function or some valves did not function, operations will have an idea to do a manual isolation of the process in case of any safety incident happening in that particular area. The safety instrumented system sensors and elements shall be clearly marked on the PNIDs in the computer software documentation. The piping and instrumentation diagram should have clear marking about the safety instrumented system sensors and final elements. This is to make sure and aware that the operations or maintenance personnel who is going to work on it will have a caution because they cannot go and simply close the isolation valves of a transmitter in case of a safety instrumented system transmitter. So, because this will lead to non sensing of the process and it may create a trouble for the particular section of the plant. New or modified safety function programming shall be verified against its specification by application code review or simulation emulator software where possible, assessment by an independent safety system coach and validated by functional tests prior to initial operations. This is also a requirement. In most of the manufacturers, they provide an emulation software for their applications. So, instead of the real plant process to be a real plant process happening with the parameters, the control system engineers or instrumentation engineers working in that plant area, they will have an access to work on the emulator, which means it's a, it's a simulation. They can simulate the parameters required and test the program, application program for its effectiveness. So, this is a mandatory step 
before the initial rollout of the particular plant's safety instrumented system. The safety requirements specification and safety instrumented system work process meets the intent of this requirement. These two rules which will set the requirement of the safety instrumented function application program. Okay, thank you.